first circuit that I want to consider here is a circuit composed of two resistors and a battery. So for this, this animation that I'm showing you is a FED simulation. Uh, I think you found it in your homework. So I think it's very useful uh, if you want to play with that later uh, because you can build any circuit you want. In fact, uh, the, any of the circuits that you will find in the homework next week, in principle, you could put it together with this thing and see what happens. For example, to check your work. You can measure the current and so on. So uh, if you fa haven't played with that, I, I uh, suggest that you do that. And so the circuit that we have, let me draw it schematically here on this side. So we have a battery. And two resistors. Oops. And the voltage across the battery is epsilon. They call it the electromotive force of the battery. And uh, they usually give it a symbol epsilon instead of delta V that we've been using. So, so there's going to be a, circuit, a current in this circuit. And the current is going to go from the positive side of the battery towards the negative side of the battery. Now, to be able to identify which in a, a schematic representation of a battery, which one is the positive side and which one is the negative, the positive side is going to be the one with the longest bar. Right? They usually do it longer and thicker, or at least it will be just longer than the other one. So you know which side has the highest potential. All right? So the current is going to flow this way. I think I want white chalk. It's going to flow that way. That's going to be the direction of the current in this circuit. Now let's think about the differences in potential as measured along the circuit. If I use the voltmeter to, uh, to measure the differences in potential there, uh, I have it right there, right? So I can do that. So for example, all right. So I can connect the voltmeter, for example, to measure the current of the voltage of the battery. It's a little tricky to do it here, so I'm going to do it here better. So let's connect that here and this one here. And the voltmeter is showing that the difference in potential is 18 volts, right? We have two batteries. They're connected in series, so that means that the positive side of one battery is connected to the negative side of the battery. So the voltage across the two batteries is one battery takes you from 0 to 9 volts, the other battery takes you from that voltage and raises that uh, voltage by 9 volts more. So the total from the bottom of one battery to the top of the second battery will be 18 volts. Right? Now what happens if we measure the uh, difference in potential? So why don't we actually do a little diagram here? So this is going to be the direction S as measured from some reference uh, point, which I'm going to say is here. This is my point, say, A, and then another point here, B, and then another point here, C, and then D, and E over here. So if I measure the difference in potential between A and B, I'm going to put my voltage over here, okay? And I'm going to see, say that the voltage at A has some value, which uh, the voltmeter, as it is connected there, is not measuring, right? That voltmeter is only measuring the difference in potential between B and A, right? So if the voltage at A is some value, which I don't know, I do know that if this is point A over here, by the time I get to B, the voltage would have gone up, right? And on the at B point B, basically, you would have a voltage that is VB. And this difference is the EMF of the battery. Uh, we call it um, epsilon. 
Okay, so that's, what's, uh, that, that's what that uh, measurement of the voltmeter is showing, is 18 volts, that's the EMF of the battery, right? Now what happens if I measure the difference in potential, say, between, between, um, points A and B. All right. I'll get back to that drawing in a second. All right. So that is saying that that difference in voltage is zero. I need to be able to save this. So this is VA, one up to B. This is point B. Between B and C, the difference in potential is zero according to the voltmeter. And we know that that should be the case because uh, that's an ideal cable. Remember that in these kind of circuits, all the wires are going to suppose, uh, we're going to assume that they're, they're ideal, therefore the resistance of those cables is zero. Therefore the difference in potential, they act as an ideal conductor, which means that the potential everywhere on that conductor is going to be constant. So if the potential is constant everywhere on that conductor, obviously point C has the same potential as point uh, B. This is point A, B, C. Now, what is the difference in potential? Uh, the next step that I want to do is measure the difference in potential between point C and point D, which is located in between the two light bulbs. Okay? So, in this diagram, what would you expect for the potential? What would be the behavior of the potential? So, at point C, it has some value, which is the same as at point B. What would happen at point D? Would the potential uh, measure at point D be higher or should it be lower than the potential at C? Remember that the current is flowing this way. So if I move through a resistor, that light bulb is a resistor. So if I move through a resistor in the direction of the current, you can think of that current as being a river, right? What happens to the height, to the difference in height between the two points? The final point, the height of the final point compared to the height of the initial point, how does it compare? If it's water flowing, right, water is only going to flow from high ground to low ground. So if I'm following the flow of water, this analogy with water, right, when water moves from C to D, that water, if it's flowing in that direction from C to D, it must be going from high ground to low ground, right? So that means that VC should be bigger than VD, right? So that means that we have to go down here. By the time we reach D, we should be uh, low, uh, lower than uh, at C. I think I went a little too far. Let me do a little shorter here, like that. That's D. And then point D uh, is down here. Should be over here. What would happen between D and E? I would expect that the potential at D should be higher or lower than the potential at E. Once again, as I move from D to E, I'm following the direction of the current, right? That river is flowing in that direction. It must be, again, moving from high ground to low ground. That means D must be higher than E, correct? So from between D and E, the potential is going to drop again. Those slopes will be the same if the two resistors are the same. In this circuit, they are. Each one is 10 ohms but they don't have to be the same, right? So the potential drops again to E, and now what's the difference in potential between E and A? It should be zero because E and A are 
on an ideal cable. It's a conductor, right? So that whole um, conductor must have the same, the same potential everywhere. Okay? So if uh, the potential at E is equal to the potential at A, the difference in potential between E and A is zero. So what does that tell you about the potential of E? If VE minus VA is equal to zero, therefore the potential at E is equal to the potential at A. Right? So, from that you conclude that you must have gotten back down to the same level that you started with. So you went, as you move in the circuit from A through the batteries to C through one light bulb through the second light bulb, by the time you make it down here to the level of A, to the potential level of A, you must have gone up, the, the uh, steps that you took to go up must be the same as the steps, the length of the steps when you add it, must be the same as when going down. So that is what we call, in the previous chapter, we call Kirchhoff's loop law. which tells you that the, if you add all of the differences in potential along a circuit, right? This, you're adding all of those delta Vs along the circuit. So delta AB, delta BC, delta CD, delta DE, right? When you're done adding all those deltas, you should end up with zero, right? It's simply a statement of conservation of energy. If you start at some point and you go back to the same point because the only force that has been acting on you is a conservative force, then uh, if you go back to the same point, you should go back with the same energy, which means that the changes in energy that you experience must be, when you add them, must be equal to zero. If you start a journey, a hike in the mountains and you start at you know, sea level, for example, and you go around a mountain and you climb it and you go to the peak, right? And then you go to some other mountain and do some circuit around there and then you go back to the same point, to the same point where you started your hike, adding all those increments in height for all the legs of your trip. When you add them, you should end up with zero. Okay? Okay, so that's something that we can apply for any kind of circuit where you do a path, you follow a path on the wires, on the resistors or whatever things that you have in your circuit and you end up at the same point that you started. If you sum, if you add all of the differences in potential, then you should end up with zero. So specifically, what are those differences in potential? The first difference in potential that we encountered was going from A to B, right? When I go from A to B, and I'm going to uh, sort of define that when I talk about the difference in potential between two points in a circuit, I always mean the downstream potential minus the upstream potential. Okay? So uh, let me write that in note here. Delta V is going to mean that I'm going to take the potential downstream and I'm going to subtract the potential upstream. That's what I mean. So when I write delta AB, that's going to mean whichever point is downstream, right? which in this case is B because I know that the current is flowing in the direction from A to B, then this is what it means. Potential at B minus potential at A. And that should be the potential, the EMF of the battery. Right? So what other difference in potential we have here? We have the difference in potential between B and C, right? which we said that it was zero. Difference in potential between uh, B and C, C and D. So I look at the potential downstream and I subtract the potential upstream and what should that be?
That difference in potential is a difference in potential measure across a resistor. The light bulb is a resistor, right? So what do we know about that difference in potential and the current that is flowing through that part of the circuit? We know that it's an ohmic element, right? It's a resistor, so it should satisfy Ohm's law, which means that that difference in potential should be equal to minus the current times the resistance. I'm just going to call it R. Both light bulbs here have the same resistance. Right? Once again, remember that the minus sign is due to the fact that current flows from high ground to low ground. So the next one, next difference in potential between D and E. That's another light bulb. It's the same as the previous light bulb. It has the same resistance. And the current, we've discussed this before, it's going to be the same. Conservation of charge requires the current to be the same all along this loop because the current doesn't have any other way to go. Right? And it shouldn't just disappear. If you measure a current at point C, it should be the same as the current at D or something happened in between those two points to the charge. So that's the difference in potential between D and E. Now, the last difference in potential that we're interested in is between A and E, and that is clearly equal to zero, if this is an ideal cable. When you do the lap, of course, and you take the voltmeter and you measure the voltage on two sides of a cable, you will not find that voltage to be zero, but it's going to be pretty close to zero, and much smaller, for sure, than the difference in uh, voltage between uh, the two ends of a resistor or a battery or any other thing that you have connected in the circuit. So that's zero. <clears throat> so we say that if we add all of these differences in potential, we should get zero. On the left-hand side, we know that the sum of all of these uh, changes in potential should be zero because of uh, conservation of energy. And on the right-hand side, we have the voltage of the battery, the EMF of the battery. I'm adding this to zero. That's a zero. To zero to that to that. So minus ER, I mean I minus IR, and that's all I have on that side. 